everybody I'm on to the next part of my loco build uh, uh, in the last part I made the pistons and the uh, piston rods so in this part then I'm going to continue with the theme and, and make the uh, piston rings I've got a nice bit of me and I cast iron here which I used on my meter made piston rings so I'll be using that uh, so without any further ado then let's crack on and uh, I'll get this started in this book that I'm working to by Jack Butler, well this isn't actually the book, this is an article from a magazine. Um, but in either case, the information for piston rings is very limited. Uh, so when I did my meter made videos, when I made the rings I was on a bit of a steep learning curve. And while I was doing that video, or those videos, I come across this article for piston rings out of the model engineer. It goes into a lot of in-depth technical detail, etc. Um, which I'll not be covering in this video. But if you're interested, in my meter made video, I'll put a link up to it somewhere up here. You'll be able to find all the pages and the issues of the model engineer that this came from if you're interested in looking at it so basically then I'm going to be following the same procedure that I did for my meter made piston rings and I'll be using this piece of cast iron that one of our chaps up at the model engineering club which I go to gave me a really nice piece of cast iron that me and I uh, and that's what I made my other piston rings from. So, uh, without any further ado, then I'll move over to the lathe and uh, get this set up and crack on with these.
they've all turned out to the exact width that I want, 205 thousandths, uh, to fit in my particular pistons which I made and, and leave a 3 to 5 thou gap on the sides. That's what I did with my meter made, although the meter made ones were a fraction wider grooves. <coughs> um, I think they were 125 instead of, I've done these at 110. So my rings are 105. So what I've done then, in each of the rings, <coughs> I've put a little nick on the inside, on the bore, where I'm going to split it. <coughs> you can either use a, a very fine, thin blade, or I just use the corner of a needle file, which is very sharp. Yeah. I'm not sure if it'll show on camera, but... And then I made this little gadget with two pieces of tool steel in, ground to a point, in a scrap bit of aluminium, so that they slide, and a groove in for the piston ring. So, here goes, line the little scribe mark up on the inside that's just to help it break um, straight line that up into that tool so I've got the little nick on the bore in line with the points of the tool and then it's just a matter of tightening the tools up till it pings and then repeat on the others. Right, let's see if that first one was a fluke. Perfect straight break. That's number three. Then what I do, uh, well what I did with my meter made, once I've got the uh, rings snapped, I just put a flat needle file in between, just to take the roughness off the, where it's broke. If you don't want to use a needle file, you could just use some fine emery cloth, double it up, and just run that in between it. I'm ready for normalising these now. 
So how I, how I do it, I've made this little wedge up and the thickness of this wedge is a certain percentage of the diameter. So in my case, this wedge measures 160 thousandths approximately, give or take a couple of thou. Uh, and I think I worked it out on my meter made that that were 12 and a half percent that would make the rings uh, extend by 12 and a half percent in the normal state. So uh, I know you could get a piece of material that's the correct width and hang them all on, then warm them up, let them cool down. But I like to put them in a fire on my fire brick flat, and then once I've got them up to red heat. I put a piece of fire brick over them so they, so they cool down very, very slowly. So I've made that little wedge look and I'm just going to slide this wedge carefully into the gap. Like that. And then once I've got that wedge in, I'll just put it on something flat, push the ring down so it's flat. Now I can sit that on my fire brick.
Well that's it for this part then, uh, I'll continue with this in the next part then, I don't know what I'll be doing next. Uh, so if you found that useful, interesting, etc, etc, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, I'd appreciate that. And I'll catch you next time then. Thanks for watching, bye for now.